It's time to take command with former NFL tight end Logan Paulson and former Commander's Beat reporter Craig Hoffman. Take five here on Take Command. That's Logan Paulson. I'm Craig Hoffman. This is the five-minute edition of the full podcast where we give you just a little, little bit of a snack to hold you over until the full podcast tomorrow. And today on Take 5, sideline stories. Logan, back on the sidelines for Game 3 of the preseason. Had some really fun interviews. You had Sam Howell. You had John yeah. Allen. Uh, you had Curtis Samuel. You had Deami Brown. Had some others as well who I'm forgetting because you, you had a lot of dudes. Yes. What, what are your favorite uh, favorite conversations, favorite questions and answers from the sidelines? Yeah, so I mean, Sam, I've just been super impressed because I got to interview him twice. And then I've interviewed him on the Command Center show. And like his professionalism like i feel like he took classes this offseason on how to answer questions because i asked him like a hard question i was like you know like what's something you could improve on from the preseason and he was just like blitz recognition i was like how do you do that and he had like three or four things he was going to work on to get that done and i just thought man like if i was a young man and a stranger was asking me these questions i don't know if i would have been as composed and so i was just really impressed with that and again that's like something that i think lends itself to quarterback one talk and 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 warren's quarterback one talk is that composure, like you ever heard that Bill uh, Parcell stories about him and Jerry Jones with Tony Romo? They like locked him in a closet during like contract negotiations, and they like stood over top of him and were like, "We need you to take a smaller number." And Romo was like, "No, I think I'm good with the number that I asked for." And then they let him out, and Parcells was like, "We got our starting quarterback." So there is like a mindset <laughs> that I think is a that it, that, that that shows, and I, I'm excited for Sam, and I think. Um, like the, the answer there got me really excited from a football standpoint. John was actually the most relaxed I've ever seen him like on the sideline, like in a good way. Like he was like very yeah. like, usually he's very like business and formulated. And he told me that he plays video games and he's playing this new simulator game that he really enjoys. And that was kind of fun. And then uh, Diami was actually probably the surprise interview of the night. Like he's got a good personality and he's kind of funny guy to talk to and very engaging on the camera. I asked him if he'd ever had, um, if he ever, you know, he's going to take Sam to go get a steak. And he was like, um, you know, you know, cause he doesn't eat red meat or whatever. Right. He's like, you know, I've always offered, but he's never said yes. And, uh, I just thought like the, he was just a very charismatic sort of guy. And then Cam Curl, Cam Curl is gigantic. First off. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize he was so tall. Like you probably know that being in the locker room more than I was. Um, no, I didn't realize he's that tall. I haven't, I haven't been around Cam a ton. Yeah. He's like, um, he, like, like I'm six, four. He's six three, and I was like, "Are you actually taller than me? Am I like shrinking?" And for a safety, he's like just a big dude, like well put yeah. together guy. And he and he, he gave a funny answer because he was like, um, you know, he talked a lot about football and Forbes, and then all of a sudden, you know, like he told me as he walked up that he was excited because his face was in the new Madden. And yeah. I brought that up to him, and he big old smile on his face, and he's like, "It's so realistic, dude. It's so exciting. They even got like, you know, they they took my dreads off, and it's got my new haircut." And I was like, "And then when you get a guy." Kind of on like a question like that and their person and their real personality like jumps yeah. out that's pretty cool so yeah that that is always something i like to do in interviews like this is inside baseball but whatever it's like i i want it, to like it's on some level it's interview strategy and you're like trying to disarm the guy but it's yeah. also like hey i see you as a human i'm also a human I'm not just doing this song and dance of asking you the things that I have to ask you. Right. Um, and, and so I think that's what makes those interviews fun. And I think you do a really good job with them. I also like, I think, I don't know how many dudes like know you played based off of like, know yeah. what, that you were a tight end or whatever. But as you just said, like you're six, four, you know, built like a football player still. So I think it's pretty obvious that like, oh yeah, this this dude was a player. So there's, I, I always feel like there's a respect when you get those, and it's what makes podcasts like what Ryan Clark does on the Pivot great. Yeah. It's what JJ Reddick's pod on the in the basketball sphere great is like you get players with players, and they just get answers that the rest of us who are media by nature don't get, and it's why like you know when we've had your former teammates on, um, yeah. I think we get better stuff. And I get to ask the same questions I would ask anyway, but I get better answers because you're you're sitting there in the other box on the Zoom. Yeah. Um, and so it's it, I think those are really fun to like kind of see the the game recognized game, even if they know absolutely nothing about your game. Yeah. Right. No, I think that's it, it is nice. And it, the, you know the thing that's been really great about the whole experience is everyone's been crazy respectful. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you get like everyone's been very willing. You know, and I think that's been really cool to. To, to see that and just see guys' personalities and see them kind of be relaxed. And I think they've got a, 
you know, a bunch of good guys on this team. You know, I'm sure there's 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 bad eggs on every team, but like in those interviews, in the settings, like they just seem to be very, um, you know, like accepting, accommodating. Yeah, accommodating. Yeah. Thank you. That's what I was looking for. So that that was really cool. And then obviously the other thing that was fun about it was. I don't know, like the schematic stuff, like even the little stuff, because you're standing right there and you can kind of see it setting up before in a way that you can't get on the TV, you know, like because it's you don't have the best angle. You're at field level. Ideally, I'd probably want to be a little bit higher so I could see everything. But you like, want, remember, remember when Burger McFarland did Monday Night Football and they had like the booger mobile that was going up and down the sideline, yeah, above yeah. the sideline. That's what we need. A, we need a Paulson mobile. That would be great, actually. Get Jason Wright on that for next season, <laughs> next preseason. Well, they have that camera, that camera truck that drives around uh, for yeah. for football broadcasts, which is right. the most annoying thing on the sideline because that guy is moving whether you're in the way or not. <laughs> like he's he's the other thing that's kind of annoying is the cheerleaders on the sideline. They take up a ton of space and they're always doing their dance irrespective of like where you're standing. Like I was watching and all of a sudden I feel like pom poms, like brushing my cheek. And I'm like, <laughs> you couldn't have like backed up like a little bit. No, so you're, can... Hey man, you're in their space. I know you're, they're not point. in yours. That's a that's, good point. That's, that's their spot, man. That's their, that is their spot. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. So, yeah. um, but yeah, pom pom to the face. Yeah. But the, uh, but the, the seeing, seeing it on the sideline was pretty cool. Like, uh, there was a play early in the game where like, you know, they, they start in, it was, uh, like a three by one, backs to the one receiver side they kind of jet the back away that backside linebacker matches because it's a four receiver set now to the to the offensive left and the slant is wide open to pringle and i thought like that's just i know that's like kind of basic stuff for eb he probably does that stuff in his sleep but it's just i think that's so fun to see that like little minutia cincinnati had a really fun uh keeper later where like they fake a pitch and the pitch guy runs like this crazy arcing bubble and I think after doing that presentation on, um, you know, West Coast versus Eric Coriel, like that horizontal space that that hook guy creates just leads these beautiful throwing windows that you can see at the field level. You're like, man, mm. that's aw- that's a really awesome little detail that you think looks dumb probably from the stands, but like the linebacker has to respect that. And then it opens the window up and it's a nice ball. So that was, that was also pretty cool. That is cool. All right. Uh, well, we're now uh, getting close to regular season. I don't know what we're going to do these next couple of weeks uh, in terms of getting ready for the season. Obviously, we'll react to the 53-man. Uh, we'll eventually preview Arizona. Once we get into the season, we'll have a post-game pod, and we have a cool announcement coming about that soon as well. But a post-game pod, a film review pod midweek, and then a preview pod. So we'll be up to three times a week soon. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get you know squeeze another interview or two in over the next couple of weeks. We'll, we'll check in with some of our media friends and you know see who's calling games. I actually know who the crew is for week one. I don't think it's been announced yet. Oh so, really? Uh, yeah, I'll tell I'll tell you off air. Um, okay. I'm excited for it. So we'll we'll, we'll maybe get a it, it. It comes the color analyst would be a great podcast guest. Um, so I will I will say that and maybe we'll uh, we'll talk to him. So. Uh, I guess you just subscribe and stay tuned and find out. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's take five. Uh, again, another eight-minute edition because Logan and I are incapable of actually doing five. five uh, but we'll yeah. see you for a full pod tomorrow here on Take Command.